This year, the legislature will not be here in April, and the assembly will not be here during the month of March. The state senate will be in session one day in February and one day in March. This is very unusual. Usually, there would be a Tuesday, Thursdays, Wednesdays would be committee meetings. They are anxiously awaiting new districts. Uh, there are seven maps that have been presented to the Supreme Court. Uh, the governor vetoed a map that was passed just the other day. Uh, and so the Supreme Court will choose one of the maps that have been submitted, uh, may amend that map, and things are ready to go. These candidates in the state legislature take out nomination papers on April 15th. They have to file their nomination papers by June 1st. So districts are top of the mind right now. Uh, and But they are wrapping up. So today, if you went and got a list of the bills. So yesterday, there were 110, I believe, bills that were heard in public hearings. The Wheeler report was five pages long, just the committees. Andy can tell you, Andy and Chuck both are, are lobbyists as well, and they can tell you that this is uh, really a hard time. The building will have a lot of people in it today. There'll be a lot of the legislators here. Um, I've had a very good response to the sessions we're doing uh, in the afternoon. So we've tried to keep our approach very bipartisan, nonpartisan. We've kept our approach strictly with the issues. And, um, and I think that that has, that has served us well. This morning's session is about educating us. The afternoon is about educating them, okay? And I'm really glad the mayors are here, um, especially from the Fox Valley. Um, I had the honor of representing Menasha in the legislature for a number of years, good number of years. I wouldn't be here without the voters of the city of Menasha at one point. Um, they like the Polish end of my character, you know, so. Um, and I want to also thank Mark, who lugged all this equipment over to everybody on, that's on you owe him. Uh, so, um, and we're here because uh, the interest in rail is rising. The interest in um, passenger rail is increasing to the local governments. In particular, I had a call from a gentleman who is um, active in Brookfield. And in the original plan for rail connecting uh, the, the high-speed rail program that uh, uh, was turned down in Wisconsin, realized that you can go from Brookfield to the intermodal station, that was 11 minutes, right? And all, all the, the nuns are no longer in downtown Elm Grove there, that big convent to move to another college, and there are developers looking at this, and they're saying, why did we do this? We, this was perfect for a railroad stop. So the, the, the increase in interest is fueled by people as local leaders taking a greater interest in their communities um, and what they, they could see for the future. And of course, the Packers have helped. Uh, Mark Murphy has talked to me. I've been in his office. There are a lot of people interested in this. So this morning, uh, we're going to hear first from Jacob Pankratz. So Governor Evers operates a little bit differently in terms of policy than the other governors have. He, um, you know, a number of years ago when he first elected, hired a woman by the name of Jennifer Dye. Jennifer Dye is his chief policy advisor. She used to work for Planned Parenthood and other groups. County Board Supervisor, Dane County, smart. Um, and what he's done is he's built a team of four people that don't represent an agency or a department that are people that are his advisors. And Jacob has risen to the top as a transportation advisor. So you're gonna hear from him, a couple of you have met him before, but the governor relies on those people for background and information. Um, 
years ago, Tommy Thompson would allow, would have relied on the Department of Administration more, right? His guy was the secretary of the department. Evers has created a team within his office that, that is very professional, that are really care about the policy end of things, and they will encourage or discourage you, you know, based on the discussion, but that's a really good thing. Secondly, the, um, the lobbyist, if you will, the chief legislative person, both federally and in the state, uh, is young Mr. Nelson Stone, uh, who's coming to join us later. Um, his father was Secretary of Agriculture under Jim Doyle all eight years. At the end of the eight years, sadly to say, his dad went up to Superior to a place they've gone, and within, he stepped into the water, he drowned. He hit a cliff going into Lake Superior, and it just, he disappeared just that quick. And his son, they had two sons, one is a DOT, one was Governor Evers' chief legal counsel, and he was just appointed as a circuit court judge, so Johnny has to monitor all of his CCAP writings now for the court system. But his, uh, his other son, the secretary's former other son, is the person who's writing about drop boxes and things about the election, so very involved in all of that. And then there's Don Boomerang. Um, who you will really enjoy, a man of the earth, of salt, just a wonderful guy, his coach, was a teacher, and he is the new railroad commissioner, and uh, he will join us, and then we're going to break into the sessions. In those sessions, we decided, the committee decided to separate the states, so we've taken Highway, uh, highway 30, uh, Interstate 39 and 51, divided the state in half. The interest is very high in that. I don't know how many people will come to each session, but we're gonna have a dialogue with, uh, and you, you see the, this is the invite that went to legislative offices, and then you have one that's entitled agenda for the day. So Larry had done, a, 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 I adjusted the agenda slightly as it related to the people in each each room, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, one adjustment to the schedule will happen, and I'm kind of very glad that it's happening. So uh, we have the first is governor's office, but Senator Wangard called, and he is going to come at 1030. So he will be here when the governor, I think it's very appropriate. He is a member, he's a Republican senator from the rural Racine County area, rural Kenosha County area. Uh, and he's a member of the Midwest Interstate Passenger Rail Commission. And our state, um, all aboard Wisconsin, was deeply involved in having Wisconsin join the commission. And at one point, a former governor refused to pay the dues to the commission, and we had to pass a separate bill in the legislature to pay the $15,000 dues to it's a great debate, Mayor. You would have loved it, just like a city council debate. <laughs> that sounds like a blast. I, I spent two hours debating $15,000 dues with a DOT budget of $2 billion, you know. Um, so that day is lined up. I believe that Representative Spiros will join us at 4 o'clock. <clears throat> I hope that some of you um, are able to stay for the reception end of it. I know Chuck has to go back. Um, some of you may have other duties back home as well. Um, but John Spiros is a former city council member of Marshfield and has really an interest. He works in transportation. He works in trucking transportation, uh, basically coordinates a small trucking company, well, not too small, in Marshfield area. So he loves this. And both the senator and the rep have enjoyed being on the Rail Commission. And our state is on that. Scott Rogers, who I think all of you have heard of or know, is our is now the treasurer for that interstate commission. He's taken the job of being the financial person on it, and our state's DOT has remained very involved in that. That commission was established to balance the, what the highway departments were doing, where they have a commission similar to help coordinate in the Midwest. So this balances that 80-20 split within DOT at the federal level. Uh, and so the commission is something we, we support very much. The Speaker of the Assembly makes an appointment. The Majority Leader in the Senate makes an appointment. 
the state makes an appointment and the governor Evers has in, has submitted Scott Rogers as their appointment and the DOT makes an appointment. So there are four representatives from each state that are on this commission. Okay, let's uh, go through introductions so you all know who's in the room. Uh, thank you for the attire today. Uh, I did put in their business attire. You have outdone it. I am compliment you on that. Andy Hawk, I'm the State Legislative Director of the Smart Transportation Division representing conductors and engineers in Wisconsin from Amtrak all the way to the Frail Railroads. Uh, 29 years on the Wisconsin Central CN property. Good morning everyone. Uh, I am Michael Potters. I'm the co-chair of the High Speed Rail Alliance. Um, I've been in that role two years now, but I've been with the HSRA for three years. Um, I'm joining you from Chicago today, where I'm based. Um, unfortunately, I had to take a bus. I did go to UW-Madison, and I was looking forward to taking that train my senior year, but, you know, here we are. Um, <laughs> and to, uh, <clears throat> to keep the train rolling, uh, metaphorically speaking, I am uh, Johnny Kolbeck. I also am here from the uh, HSRA's Ambassador Committee, so Alex, Michael, and myself uh, have different daytime jobs, but at night we uh, volunteer for the organization and try to advocate for rail wherever we can, both here in Wisconsin and around the country. Um, I'm uh, originally born in Milwaukee, raised in Germantown, another G city uh, in Washington County, uh, but I've lived in Madison for the better part of a decade now. Um, went to undergrad here and now I'm completing my MBA on nights and weekends. Um, during the day, I am the uh, project manager for enterprise, enterprise solutions for the judicial branch for the state Supreme court system. Um, and just excited to be here representing kind of the next generation of train advocates, both um, from the university side with some affiliation in the Wisconsin High Speed Transportation Group and uh, more nationally with HSRA. So thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Ott, uh, and I live here in Madison. Uh, I've served on the board of All Aboard Wisconsin for, what, about four or five years? Correct. Now, since uh, Gary Goyke was kind enough to uh, make that happen. And, uh, and I also, uh, for the last two and a half years or so, have had the chance to work uh, on the staff of the High Speed Rail Alliance. We're here in force today, obviously. Um, I'm the, the deputy director. We're a national nonprofit organization. And uh, to say just a little bit about what we aim to do for those who aren't familiar, we have, we have three top objectives. Uh, one is to establish a national railway program, kind of similar to the highway program. Uh, you know, we need national coordination and dependable funding to, to build a really modern uh, train system. We want to get at least one high-speed line 200 miles an hour running in the United States this decade. It looks like that's going to happen between uh, Las Vegas and LA, uh, thanks to a private company called yeah. Brightline. And then uh, nearer and dearer to us here in the Midwest, uh, our third top objective is investment in the Chicago hub, uh, because Chicago for you know nearly the whole history of American railroading has been the hub for the you know much of the continent. There are lines that radiate out from Chicago to both coasts and north and south and in all directions, including here to Wisconsin. Uh, the trains that we want to have uh, running in Wisconsin uh, will in, in many ways depend on strengthening that foundation in Chicago. So thank you. Good morning, uh, Mayor Tony Penderman with the City of Kukana. Um, I was first entrusted by the voters of Kukana in 2007 when I ran for Alderman, where I spent 11 years on the Common Council before running for mayor in 2018. I will be up for re-election in April of this year for my fourth two-year term. And I am here representing the City of Kukana in support of high-speed passenger rail, um, extending up to the Green Bay area. And thank you for having me. Good morning, I'm Don Marcus. I'm the mayor of the city of Menasha. I've been mayor for about 16 years and I have about two months to go before I drift <laughs> off into the distance or maybe ride the rails into the distance. I uh, first developed a love of passenger trains at UWM when I went to school for the School of Architecture and started riding the rails down to Chicago quite often and now I tend to do that whenever I go out to DC as well. So having that connection to Green Bay and the Fox Cities and connecting that portion of the state, which is probably about a million people, is really important to us, as well as um, a lot of the eastern half of Wisconsin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Michael Schlichting. I am a just completed my doctorate in looking at transportation and community development. Uh, background there is, well, I'm sorry, with the University of Wisconsin-Madison as a lecturer, both in engineering and the past in the business school, real estate. 
And uh, I also founded the group of, called the Wisconsin High Speed Transportation Group, which is a student-led group with a passion towards bringing the high speed technology that's around the world to the United States. So I'm really proud of the several individuals in the room uh, that have watched uh, take on this passion. Background with me, I actually grew up in the Chicagoland area and I actually came from the airline industry where I worked for 10 years at United, um, traveling around the world, traveling the Shikansen and the TGV and wondering why don't we have this technology here in the United States. And that's where the passion started from and then came back from my MBA at the university and stayed for the doctorate. And uh, it just gets really exciting because I see the future of what this country could look like if we had the technology that the rest of the world has. So Thank really you. excited to be here today. Thank, Thank you. you. As usual, anyway, I'm Phil Swanworth from Eau Claire, Wisconsin, probably one of the elders of the room next to Gary here. And I'm a retired city bus driver. I don't have the fancy degrees and everything. However, a little uniqueness, I got on the Transit Commission. Now I'm chair of the Transit Commission in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. And I keep things a little bit online and transit involves more than buses, it involves more than ferries, it definitely involves rail. And along with Mark, we're on the West Central Rail Coalition Board as well as all aboard Wisconsin Rail Coalition Board. So rail is very part of transportation, alternative transportation, and I look forward to the input from all of you to absorb your information as well. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Um, Don Vubrink is probably, um, uh, has, is, is going to, the Railroad Commissioner, his, his appointment is pending. In fact, the hearing on his appointment was yesterday. Um, and it is subject to the Senate confirmation, the State Senate confirmation. And these past few weeks, the Senate confirmations have been difficult for many of the governor's recommended uh, people for these jobs. A couple have been fired from jobs that they've actually been appointed to for a long time. Don served in the assembly, not the Senate. And so uh, we, we, All Aboard Wisconsin is a registered lobbying organization and we are supporting his nomination uh, for that position. We've talked about it. Uh, Andy and Chuck have met with him recently um, his job today is to tell you a little bit about his budget. Um, it is about safety and about railroad crossings and about the money that the legislature gives him. All Aboard Wisconsin lobbies in favor of what Governor Evers proposed in that budget. It is a six year term, regardless of who's governor. Uh, and so when he is appointed, he gets to serve. If the state Senate adjourns and they do not confirm him, he will continue to serve in that position until he is fired, if that's the case. Just so you're aware of the dynamics of that um, in that situation. I, I wanna just go over this. Um, uh, this is the uh, transportation committees, okay? So uh, you're gonna see the, uh, there's the Senate Committee on Transportation and Local Government. Um, so our meeting room this afternoon that uh, Chris will go to and others for uh, Eastern Wisconsin has been uh, hosted by Senator Tim Carpenter, who is a 20 year Senate veteran third district in Milwaukee, um, and he has taken a greater interest. He is the ranking Dem on this committee. Uh, and so um, uh, also supporting us, we're working on the, the, the three Republican members of the committee. Uh, and, you know, they, they do a lot of this uh, review of the budgets and so forth. On the Assembly Transportation Committee, as you know, it's a big committee. So the Assembly has 99 members, but look, there's 15 or so on the committee. Nancy Vandermeer is from a little town called Sparta, Wisconsin. She and her husband are in retail sales of automobiles, trucks, new and used, um, and she chairs that committee. She has been very open to talking to us um, about rail, passenger rail issues. And the ranking member on that committee who hosted us in this room today is Dave Considine. Dave is gonna join us to say hello. Um, we will think the second sheet of committees is uh, the Joint Finance Committee. And just, I don't want to go through this when the guests are here, but for everybody, 
This is the committee that deals with the governor's budget. And they are, this is the committee, a couple of members have changed, that approved TCMC and the commissioner's budget by the hair of the chinny chin chin. So the TCMC money is to the penny of the original DOT proposal, not taking into account price changes or inflation. Um, so the DOT is watching very carefully. If the state of Minnesota continues to proceed to connect the Twin Cities with Duluth and Superior, the train will go through part of Wisconsin and Douglas County. This committee, we are gonna to have to convince to approve a small amount of the state share of that, which is not in the budget right now. The, the Minnesota legislature said, let's go. Um, so they are looking at a phenomenal project there that the city of Superior and the city of Duluth are very interested in. But we're gonna focus on uh, over the summer and these months on these three, these committees here, the Joint Finance Committee, the Transportation Committees. We may even be able to ask one of these committees to have a public input session at the state level for communities to come to. I could foresee a meeting, uh, Tom Checks is from Wausau, I could foresee a meeting that he might hold in the Fox Valley to say, but what, what's really going on here? What's really happening? So I just wanted to share that with you.